How are embryos chosen in an IVF cycle? Hello and welcome to Fertile Minds. I'm Carolyn Hills, one of the senior scientists with the Queensland Fertility Group. And today I'd like to answer your question, how are embryos chosen during your IVF cycle? Now an embryo is simply an egg that's been fertilised by a sperm. And once this happens, we culture our embryos in embryoscopes. Now the beauty of an embryoscope is that it's essentially an incubator with cameras attached. So this is able to take images of the embryos every 10 minutes through 11 different focal planes. So at any stage during that growth, we can literally watch the movie of what is happening in the embryo to see what's going on and to judge a few different parameters. Now the first parameter we look at is whether the embryo has fertilised normally. Now by normal, I mean it's two pronuclei. Pronuclei are simply small nucleus within the egg itself, or it's now an embryo, and each of those, one comes from the sperm and has, contains the genetic information from the sperm, the other one contains the genetic information from the egg. Now eggs actually have a mechanism whereby once a sperm has actually fertilised the egg, it will stop more sperm fertilising. Occasionally this fails and we see three or more pronuclei in an embryo. We know this isn't normal because it actually has too many chromosomes. So we would usually choose against using these in your IVF cycle. The next stage we look at is the cleavage stage. Now this is where they go from a one cell to a two cell, two cell to a four cell, and so on and so on. So on day one, we would expect to see a one cell embryo. On day two, we would expect it to develop up to probably a six cell embryo. Day three, it's six or more cells. By day four, it often reaches a stage called a morula. Now, morula is Latin for mulberry, and it basically looks like a mulberry. It's got too many cells to count. After day four, those cells all merge together and actually form what's called a blastocyst. Now, this is where you get a clearing within the, the actual embryo itself called a blastocele. That's a small fluid-filled cavity. You also get those cells differentiating into two different groups. One is the inner cell mass, which will hopefully become the baby, and the others actually form a cohesive epithelium around the blastocyst, that's called the trophectoderm. So we grade all of these features in your embryos. After the blastocyst stage, we actually see them hatching sometimes as well, and that's exactly what it sounds like. The blastocyst actually hatches out of its zona pellucida, or its outside shell, and it needs to do this to implant into the uterine wall. Now, while the embryos are developing, there's a number of different features that we look for. We look to make sure there's been no direct cleavage, which is where an embryo divides from a one to a three cell rather than a one to a two, or a two to a five cell rather than two to four. Again, we're fairly sure that these are abnormal, so we would tend to choose against them. Also, if there's multinucleation, this is where there's more than one nucleus in a cell as it's dividing. Again, we're fairly sure these are not normal, so we would try to choose against them if at all possible. The other things we look at in embryos are that the actual cells or the actual blastomeres in, a cell, in the embryo are of a nice even size, that they're nice and translucent, and there isn't too much fragmentation in the embryo itself. So that's basically it. We grade them on what they look like and how they've been developing. But please remember, even though an embryo may not be textbook perfect, average embryos give us beautiful, healthy babies every day. To stay up to date on all things fertility, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Take care.